You know, it wasn't until I read the book that I realized that you have a form of vertigo. Hmm. You, Chris Hathaway. <laughs> Iconic <laughs> astronaut. Yeah, the CN Tower. Concerned about heights. <laughs> CN Tower makes me uncomfortable, sure. Uh, I think you Space should. Spacewalker, <laughs> Chris Hatfield, <laughs> afraid of heights. I think you should be afraid of heights. I, th I think if, if you don't have a natural fear of falling off a cliff, then you're probably going to fall off a cliff. It, it sh your body should resist letting you stand somewhere dangerous. You should have a fear of, of charging rhinoceroses and, and a fear of you know sharks. I think that's a good fear to have. Yeah, uh, okay, but <laughs> <laughs> you're well, out there on a tether. Right. Spacewalking. I mean, I, you know, I, I understand as you, as you walked us through how you control the potential for fear and other things. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's a kind of a natural thing that happens to people who, who fear heights, and then suddenly you're doing the ultimate height thing. It, well, it's, it's a mind game, right? Um, you're afraid of heights, but you're, you're not really afraid of heights. What you're afraid of is hitting the ground. And so if you can somehow know you're not going to fall from whatever height you're at and hit the ground, then it doesn't concern you. If you go up a 60-story building, if you're inside the building so where you don't have any windows, you lose perspective that you're now, whatever, 600 feet above your normal ground. And if you just walk over and stand on the balcony, suddenly it comes home to you or stand by a window, your height that you're at. But you can convince yourself that you're not going to fall. And it's the same sitting in an airliner, uh, sitting in the airplane held up by the wings. You're held up by something, and you, you're not, there's no way you can suddenly fall from that height. So you can do the same thing on a spacewalk. However, when I first came outside, and, and you're only holding on with your hands out there. There's, there's, you're not like clipped on you know, with some structure. You have a little clothesline attached on a reel so that if you let go with your hands, you'll float off and slowly get dragged back in again. But when I first went outside, I was holding on tight. And I, I had to consciously, you know, if, if I could have seen my, my, my knuckles, they would have been white, I'm sure, just from grabbing on, but the inside the gloves. But um, after a while, you start to look around and realize that it's not that you can even fall to Earth. You and Earth are going around the sun together. It'd be like thinking you were suddenly going to fall to the moon or fall to the sun. It, it can't physically happen. The two of you are going there together along with the spaceship. And instead, the world then becomes uh, something that is traveling through space with you. And as soon as you can make that mental shift that, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm on the 60th floor, but I'm, in, I'm not going to fall, then your hand starts to relax. And after a while, I actually completely let go, just flying along with the spaceship and myself and the world uh, going around the sun. And that was probably the best moment of it all, the perspective of that aloneness of some of our first steps away and seeing the world for what it truly is, this big ship moving around the sun, going through the universe just like we were.